G'day and welcome to another video. This video is February's vlog and I'm going to put in some footage of what I've been up to this month. We had a very big Gawana in our yard as you can see from the footage on your screen. I don't know if it was a boy or a girl but he or she was about two meters long from the tip of the nose to the end of the tail. The tails are quite long but the body itself was at least a meter. There's going to be all sorts in this video. We went for a day trip and I cannot remember where we went but I'm going to put it across the screen. And on our way we stopped in at a chocolate factory. We didn't do a tour or anything but we did stop in the gift shop and buy a few goodies. On the way back we stopped at Goulburn and you can see here the big merino. This thing is huge, you can probably tell by the size of the car. This is located on one of the freeway exits that we have here and it used to be in a different um, location but they moved it to closer to the freeway. I cannot remember where it used to be, if anyone knows you could put the answer in the comments section. But it used to be yeah, somewhere else but they moved it. You also used to be able to go up into the top of the sheep in where the eyes are and look out the eyes but you can no longer do that. I have never done that either. I think it was before my time or maybe we just didn't go that way when we were kids. It's about an hour and a half or so from our house so. But still fun to look at as you drive along the road. I'm still working on my Scraptastic Granny as you can see here. It's just about finished but I do have a heap of ends to sew in. I know I always tell you to sew ends in as you go but the truth is I don't always do that. But it's looking fabulous and it's big enough to cover me from about my neck down to my toes so that's pretty much the size I wanted it to be. Picture of the sunflower that's growing in our garden. I planted six seeds and this is the only one I got. I've got three photos there but it's the same plant. It was absolutely beautiful. The big tall flower, it was taller than me, I'm about five foot seven and this thing was way taller than I was. I had to actually reach up to get this photo. I've also been organizing my yarn stash. You can see here on the shelf. This is a before photo and everything was just sort of shoved in there in like boxes and there is organization like it's in colors and and thicknesses of yarn and all the knitting needles and my crochet hooks are together but it was really a mess. To me it looked like a mess and it didn't I didn't like it. So I organized it all, pulled it all out and then stuck it all back in and I think this looks much better. All the yarn at the top and then you've got knitting needles and everything underneath. This has changed since I've done this photo because I went on a yarn shopping spree and had to fit some in. But it's pretty much the same, it's just those knitting needles and everything have moved down a shelf and there's yarn above it. So one of my latest releases is my Jessica shawl and you can see it here on the screen. It can be worn in various ways. I love this yarn. I used chic sheep in the pool side and fairy tail and I made another version in fiber spates DK sorry but I can't remember the colorway. You might notice the shawl pin that's used on this shawl and my sister got that for me for Christmas and I absolutely love it and the color of it is so beautiful and works perfectly with this shawl. I love the softness and the bright colors of the chic sheep and that's a red heart yarn. You can see photos of my backyard there it's so dry at the moment and we really need some rain. The Jessica shawl is a very big shawl it is quite long it's about two meters wide and I think it's about a meter deep. I think that's the measurements but I'll put a link in for the video tutorial on the screen on the right hand side the little information thing will pop up if you click on that it'll take you to the tutorial here's another photo of organizing some shelves you can see the before photo still got lots of boxes and things in it and then you've got the after photo I think that looks much better and more organized I'm using Ziploc bags to put my yarn in which works really well you can see here that this is what came out of those two shelves and one of the things is still in its parcel so obviously I had no idea what was in that. It's been in there a long time and I found the receipt and I think it was about eight years ago that I bought it. So this is my before photo with stuff everywhere 
and then we can see I've tied it up a bit there and organized it all also you can see the before photo of the whole yarn room and also the after picture which looks much better this is a spice rack that I use in my craft room let's face it I was never going to put any spices in it because I just buy them in they're already in a jar when I buy them so I thought what could I use it for and it's perfect for stitch markers sewing needles and all its diff different notions that you use when you're knitting or crocheting this is a caterpillar that I found outside I just had to film it I don't know what it's called but it looks like a unicorn and it was white and fluffy and had pink on it as well the pink's not really showing up but it had a sort of a pink stripe down the back could be a snorkel maybe it goes underwater I don't know but it's very cute so I'm going to put in a warning here there are spider photos in this video so if you don't like them I would suggest that you look away at the moment I am going to describe them we've got this huge spider that lives in our house and I've named him Frank and he just appears everywhere he appears in the bathroom he appears on the wall and every time you go and catch him he is so quick that you just can't get hold of him and here he is doing a jig You can look back at the screen now, all the spiders have gone for now. Here are some two here are two kangaroos that thought it would be nice to lay in the sun on our in our front yard. These are grey kangaroos. That's pretty much what they're called, grey kangaroos. Self-explanatory, because they're grey. They were just sitting there for ages, sitting around in the sun. I can't remember if it was the morning or the or the afternoon, but it definitely wasn't during the day because they would have been way too hot very cute and they're quite fluffy as well the one on the right hand side is a baby and um, it's probably about half the size of the other one I'm assuming the other one's a mother but yeah so cute they're very timid and as soon as you go outside they just run away well technically they hop but yeah very very cute I'm filming this from inside my house so it's very hard to keep the camera still here are some rosellas eating bird seed and there's a magpie on the right hand side the black and white one but I got really close to these rosellas I think they were so busy eating that they maybe didn't realize I was standing there but I took my time and went really slow and they just kept eating <laughs> there was bird seed in the black um, saucer that you can see there but they I think they've taken it all out it's when I'm editing I've got such a small screen that I can't really see very much detail especially birdseed but the little monkeys have spread it all through the mulch there and it's now growing like grass so I've been out there pulling it out I guess they didn't find all the birdseed but they're so beautiful and they are an Australian native bird and so is the magpie which is the black and white one like I said before But they've since had babies this was filmed a little while ago um, and I totally forgot to put it into a video so they've had babies and there's about 17 or 18 of them that come around now in total the males are the one with the red head and the blue that you could just see there and then the females are the green ones here comes that unicorn caterpillar again he's just so cute I had to put him back in A few months ago, I can't remember exactly when, but it was definitely a few months ago, I was down in the Wollongong area and we could see lightning. This is the escarpment which looks back towards, uh, if you know the area, it looks back towards 
I would say Mittagong and Pipton, if you know the area. And we're down in the Wollongong Wanuna area watching this storm. It was really, really strange. There was absolutely no sound. All you could hear was crickets and, and frogs croaking. But all you could see were these flashes. And you can see the mountain there. That's the escarpment. And it just continued for a couple of hours. I, I know it was at least an hour, but I know I went to bed. Because this was about 10 o'clock at night. About 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Absolutely no sound. So no thunder. Just these great big flashes. And my husband was at home on this day, on this night. So I gave him a call because I wasn't at home when I filmed this. Gave him a call and said, are you getting that storm up there? And he's like, yeah, the, the, the sky's just dancing. It was pretty spectacular, spect ugh, spectacular to see. And I don't think I'll ever see it again. My dad lives not far from us and he got the same storm. And, and we've lived here in Australia for almost 30 years and never seen a storm like this. It was amazing. It was absolutely beautiful and stunning. And um, yeah, nature at its best. I don't know why I filmed this, but I thought I'd put it in here. This is how I crochet normally when I'm not doing a tutorial. And this is the speed that I crochet at. See, as you can see, it's a lot faster than what I do in tutorials. If I did that in tutorials, you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. We haven't had rain a good amount of rain for almost eight months and this is the first downpour that we've had in eight months we've had sprinkles of rain I wouldn't even really call it rain but as you can see here the heavens opened and it was raining cats and dogs the birds were loving it you can see in the distance there where those birds are there's actually water running through the paddock I have not seen that like I said in over eight months so it was a good amount of rain. It lasted for about half an hour um, but we haven't really had too much rain since. We've had a couple of days where we've had some rain but nothing like this that I'm aware of. I have been away on a holiday so we may have had some in the last two weeks. This is another day trip that Hubby and I went on and we went to visit the, the Kayama blowhole which is on the coast uh, near Wollongong if you're familiar with the area. It's about an hour south of Sydney down the coast and I'm going to put in some footage of the roads that we drove on the places that we went to we stopped in for a hot chocolate and a coffee to a little cafe that we've been to before I don't think we got any food no we didn't because we'd already had breakfast so we just stopped in there for a coffee there's a fabulous old bridge which I'm definitely going to insert some footage of and yeah, so enjoy the ride. The ocean wasn't very rough when we were there, so we didn't get much of a blowhole effect, but you can see a little bit and how the blowhole works.
I finally f finished my knitted harvest cardigan. That's a mouthful. And I'm so happy with it. I used an 8-ply yarn. I'll put all the details what I used on the screen. And I used an 8-ply yarn, which is thinner than what's recommended in the pattern. So all I did was make one size bigger. And it seemed to work really well. I don't know if that was just beginner's luck or if that's something that you can actually do. But the yarn I had was 8-ply, which is a number 3 weight yarn. And the recommended pattern, the recommended yarn in the pattern was a... 10 ply or a worsted weight or a number 4 weight yarn. I'm very happy with the way it turned out and it is a great beginner's pattern and if you've never made a jumper or a sweater or a cardigan before I would recommend this for a beginner.